Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, comments, or success story you'd like to share, we love hearing those. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, or if you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products, which you can find at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Our number is 844-236-6010, and we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Longevity products, please head to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got the Longevity products up, as well as blog stories, blog posts and news stories, and videos. You can also purchase Longevity products by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Make sure you ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business, make some money selling Longevity products, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Call 866-735-2470 for more info, or you can sign up directly off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And I'd also like to, rem- like to remind you to check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truth retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol, a big dose of t- uh, premium lipophilic fat soluble vitamin C. No preservatives, no fragrances, no fillers, no waxes, no oils, no water, no silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatment products. You can find them all at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Transdermal C Serum, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. They're all at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about salt, more specifically table salt. Salt's kind of a biochemical term. There's lots of different salts, but when we talk about salt and low salt diet or making sure you're salting your food or not salting your food, we're referring to table salt or sodium chloride, 40% sodium, 60% chloride, two of the most important elements in the body, sodium and chloride are. When you understand how incredibly fundamental these two electrolytes, electrical minerals are to healthy electrical functioning, particularly when it comes to nerves and muscles and the heart, the fallacy of the low salt diet becomes pretty obvious. These things are super, super important. Despite what we hear from mainstream medical folks, it has never been shown that human beings, uh, that in human beings, salt intake is too high and that uh, uh, cardiovascular disease is a function of elevated salt intake. It's, it's never been shown that elevated salt intake is linked to cardiovascular disease. There have been some rat studies that were done on feeding incredibly high amounts of salt to rats and blood pressure went up. Yes, that is true. 
but it's very difficult to eat too much salt if you're paying attention to your body. Salt intake is regulated really tightly. Salt excretion is very effective. When you eat too much salt, it simply comes out in your urine. It's not like you eat salt and then it just piles up somehow in your blood. Like you just eat spoons of salt and then the levels go up. That's not how it works. That's a simplistic idea that's promoted by non-biochemists, people who don't understand how the body works. Some of these people practice medicine. It comes from that same biochemical or non-biochemical, I should say, logic that doctors use when they say that eating cholesterol will cause your arteries to become clogged with cholesterol. It's not how it works. You don't eat cholesterol and it piles up in your arteries and you don't eat salt and it just piles up in your blood. Salt is super important stuff and the body has evolved mechanisms for controlling its levels. Salt is very active. So we have these sophisticated mechanisms for keeping its concentration in the blood regulated. Salt levels are controlled for one, uh, one way that salt levels are controlled is from palatability, taste. Try drinking salt water and you'll notice that you're going to reach a point where your body just doesn't let you drink any more salt. You'll be repulsed by it. You'll, you'll have to force yourself to drink too much salt. You have to force yourself to eat too much salt. It's because the brain is actually sensing the salt in the blood and it's making any more than it needs unpalatable. So the brain actually controls the amount of salt that you'll eat, if you can taste the salt, that is. Now, pa processed and packaged foods, of course, you can't taste the salt sometimes. And sometimes sodium is hidden in things like sodium bicarbonate and sodium benzoate and um, other forms of sodium, monosodium glutamate. So sometimes sodium is hidden in various non-salty chemicals. So in that way, you can get too much sodium. But still, you have other mechanisms for getting rid of this stuff. Sodium and chloride are powerful biological mechanisms. So the body has evolved powerful mechanisms. Or, uh, I should say sodium and, and chloride are powerful biological elements. So the body has evolved sophisticated mechanisms for controlling their levels. The main organs that control our salt concentration are the kidneys and the adrenal glands. And here is the clue to why salt levels can get out of whack. The kidneys and the adrenal glands under healthy conditions are going to control the amount of salt that's in the blood. Under ordinary circumstances, the kidney can handle, all this, it can handle salt. That's as long as we're healthy. The kidneys can filter out salt very effectively. Remember, salt is important stuff. You need salt. You're going to get salt. So the body knows how to control these things. A normal kidney can filter out a teaspoon of salt every five minutes. Nobody eats that much salt. Nobody's going to overwhelm the kidneys when the kidneys are healthy. Could it be that the seeming relationship between how much salt we're getting or salt intake and high blood pressure is more about the kidneys than it is about the intake? Could it be that our kidneys aren't doing their work? Could it be that elevated salt levels are not about how much we're eating, but how much we're not excreting because our kidneys are whacked out? Hmm, interesting thought, considering that 14% of Americans suffer from chronic, chronic kidney disease. Over 40 million people have chronic kidney disease. And way more Americans than that have kidneys that are in the process of becoming, uh, of, of deteriorating, heading towards chronic kidney disease. If you factor that in, you're looking probably 50, 60 million at least. That might be where the problem is. Then you got your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are also involved in the mineral balance. Now, there's no official statistics on adrenal fatigue, but I would guess that adrenal fatigue issues also affect many millions of people. The adrenal glands are in many ways salt processing glands. When we're under stress, hormones are released that increase salt, uh, increase the amount of salt that's going to be in the blood by slowing down its excretion. So eliminating, kid, eliminating salt under ordinary circumstances should be, shouldn't be a problem. You eat salt, you eliminate it. If you eat too much, you eliminate it. But when the kidneys aren't working like they should, elimination will suffer. And when the adrenal glands are fatigued or the adrenal glands are hyperactive from too much stress, again, excretion of salt will slow down. By the way, the reason for that is, is when salt levels go up in the blood, blood pressure goes up. Yes, salt, elevated salt levels will cause your blood pressure to go up, but it's not because you're eating too much salt, it's because the kidneys aren't working or because we're under too much stress. That's what we got to be working on. Oh, how do you work on your kidneys? Lower your sugar. How do you work on your adrenals? Relax the body. Also lower the sugar. Also stabilize and control digestive health. Work with digestive health. Where'd you hear that before? That's called the triangle of disease. 
KDR. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Farms has been here. Got lines open for you at 844 236 6010. 844 236 6010. If you have questions about uh, salt intake, hypertension, cardiovascular health issues, electrolytes, anything we're speaking about here today. Or if you have a comment or success story, or if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to talk about our true skin health products, formulation, ingredient questions, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, you can purchase products off of uh, the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. So, you've got two major structures in the body that control salt, in t- uh, salt levels in the blood, the kidneys, which are responsible for excretion of salt, and the adrenal glands. In fact, that's one of the major roles of the adrenal glands is to control salt intake. That's because salt plays a role in how, uh, in how uh, fluidized the blood is, which in turn plays a role in blood pressure. This is where the idea that lowering salt and raising salt and changing salt levels will affect blood pressure. Yes, that is true. However, the idea that you can somehow not eat salt and that will lower your blood pressure just doesn't make biochemical sense because salt is controlled by the body. When your salt levels drop, you crave more. When your salt levels drop, your body will secrete hormones that will slow down the elimination of salt. It's all controlled by the kidneys and by the adrenal glands. And so many of us are dealing with adrenal health issues. Low blood pressure is often found in people who have adrenal fatigue issues. The adrenal glands are responsible for blood pressure and they're uh, also responsible for uh, helping the body deal with stress. When we're under stress, we secrete hormones, specifically something called aldosterone, which will change how salt is handled by the body. It will end up causing salt levels to increase in the blood. Could it be that lowering blood pressure is more about relaxing? It's more about reducing stress hormones, but more about lowering sugar levels than it is about going on a low-salt diet. This is craziness, really, when you think about it. On the other hand, low salt, low salt levels, that is a problem. Low salt levels will trigger uh, stress hormones as much as anything else, any other stress in the body will. That's probably why, according to a study of 69,000 people that was published in The Lancet and written about in uh, The New York Times July, uh, in July 2011, those who ate less than three grams of salt had a 26% higher risk of death as well as a higher risk of stroke and a higher risk of heart disease than those who ate five grams. You ate less salt, you had a higher risk of dying and a higher risk of heart disease. Let me say that again. Low salt, folks who ate less salt had a higher risk of heart disease, not a lower risk. Under conditions of salt deficiency, we go into fight or flight mode. We put more stress on the adrenal glands in an already stressed out system. Remember, salt is really important. For millions of years, there was no salt. So when the body senses low salt, it kicks into fight or flight, like go and get some salt. Fight or flight means you better go out and find that, find that substance that's missing. So when we're under low salt, the body goes into an emergency mode in an attempt to get us to go out and find more salt and also in an attempt to, to fluidize the blood. Under conditions of low salt, the blood pressure may actually go up. This low salt fight or, uh, fight or flight functioning will also increase our cravings for salt, our drives for salt. That's why one of the best things you can do if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues, and by the way, you, you can tell you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues if you have something called orthostatic hypotension. That's where you stand up from a sitting position and you get dizzy. Or if you're working out, maybe you might get dizzy. When you, put, when you put some burden on the body, you feel woozy or dizzy, that's a sign that you might be dealing with adrenal fatigue. And if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue issues, drinking salt water is one of the best ways to handle that. Actually increasing your salt intake is one of the best ways to handle adrenal fatigue issues. It doesn't matter, you're gonna actually crave, if you're craving salt, there's a pretty good chance that you're dealing with adrenal, adrenal fatigue issues if you find yourself craving salty foods. Now, if you find yourself craving salty foods, what you're going to end up doing is eating potato chips or pizza 
or french fries. That's most of the salty foods that are available to us contain nasty fats, they're processed, they're not good foods. That's why if you actually drink salt water, you'll be able to uh, eliminate your salt cravings, raise your salt levels without having to eat the trans fats and the processed foods that are ordinarily included with our salty foods. Most of the salty foods that we eat are not good foods. So just by eating straight salt, and also if you mix fat with salt, that will make the salt more flavorful. Fat and salt go together. And fat and salt also have an, a, a higher electrical energy. Fat is also electrical. Salt is electrical and fat is electrical. So mixing salt with avocados, for example, or mixing salt with eggs, for example, or mixing salt with uh, some kind of uh, a salad oil, if you're gonna do salad oils, and I know, that, I know the whole thing about oils, and I'm not a big believer in using oils, but if you're going to use oils, uh, maybe some nutritional oil like Udo's Blend, mix it in with a little salt. And when you're using salt, by the way, you should use sea salt or Celtic, uh, uh, Celtic sea salt or some kind of Himalayan salt, not table salt, not Morton salt, not processed salt, which has all kinds of crapola in it, processing chemicals and flow agents, etc. You should always be using sea salt or Himalayan salt. Mix it with oil or mix it with a fatty food. It makes the salt much more delicious tasting. In uh, the book, The Salt Fix, which I absolutely love, by the way, my two favorite books on salt, if you're interested, are The, the Salt Fix, which we've been quoting from here for the last couple of days, Dr. James D. Nicole Antonio, and also Dr. David Brownstein, who writes a lot about iodine. He also has a book called Salt Your Way to Health. Both of these are really easy to read, and they've got a lot of good information. In The Salt Fix, Dr. D. Nicole Antonio, also mentions another interesting historical fact. With the advent of refrig refrigeration in the, 19, uh, in the early 1900s, the same period that heart disease began to rise. So as we started to refrigerate foods, heart disease started to rise. Why is that important? Well, before we refrigerated foods, we ate more salt. Before we refrigerated foods, we were pickling and we were brining and we were curing because salt acts as a preservative. When refrigeration came in, we, know we didn't have to use salt as a preservative anymore, so salt, for a little bit anyway, salt intake dropped. But heart disease didn't drop, heart disease went up. So it seems that low salt and low salt diets are more about politics and more about dogma and more about all old ideas and more about bad science than they are about good health. The, salt, uh, the dry, uh, drive for salt is built in, and if you are going to eat more salt than your body can handle, you're going to have to force yourself to do it, or it has to be hidden in processed foods, or for the most part, your body can handle excess amount of salt. Remember, the kidney is very efficient at excreting salt. Main point here is when it comes to salt, salt is a major player. Sodium, chloride, sodium and chloride are major players in bioelectricity, as well as, interestingly, alkalinizing the blood. We all know that the blood has to be alkaline. Most people know that the blood has to be alkaline, and salt plays a major role in alkalinizing the blood, according to an article published in the July 1934 edition of Annual Reviews of Biochemistry. 93% of the alkaline elements in the blood are sodium. Now, the best way to quickly alkalinize the blood, of course, is oxygen, but over the course of time, over in the long term, there are minerals, particularly sodium, that have an alkalinizing effect on the blood as well. And then, of course, salt fluidizes the blood because it attracts water. There's a very interesting way that works, by the way. We'll talk about that, uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue. And as we finish up talk, talking about salt and the importance of salt for good health and why you don't want to be on a low-salt diet for good health. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you if you have questions about uh, the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, or uh, if you just want to comment or have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. Hang on. We'll get your calls here in just a minute if you're on hold. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We're on the air Monday through Friday. Ten, uh, eight, uh, eight to nine Pacific, uh, eight to nine Pacific, and ten to eleven Central Time, twenty four seven, on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben, uh, brightsideben.com, and benfuchsarchives.com. So, uh, we have uh, search engines at both pages: benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off the websites: brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com. 
and criticalhealthnews.com or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for info or if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, 866-735-2470. Okay, so a couple stories here I want to read, and then we'll get your calls. We do have lines open, A442366010 from the journal Nature Communications, How the Ketogenic Diet Curbs Inflammation. The ketogenic diet is a calm-your-body-down diet. Allows you to get energy without having to eat calories. Calories represent heat. Calor comes from the Spanish word hot. Calor means hot, and calories represent heat. Calorie is literally a unit of heat. Food means heat. This is why the le- uh, less food you eat, the longer you live. The body doesn't like to have a lot of heat. Going ketogenic allows the body to get energy without having to deal with a lot of heat. Heat is something that the body wants to avoid. It protects itself from heat. Heat and inflammation are associated with each other. By going ketogenic, you not only reduce heat, you also reduce inflammation. If you're dealing with any inflammatory health challenge, which is to say all health challenges, the ketogenic diet will benefit you. That's why I've always said the ketogenic diet is the ideal way to eat. We all have some degree of inflammation going on. This is what the aging process is about. But you have big time inflammation if you're dealing with some long-term chronic degenerative disease. You know, 40% of Americans have at least one chronic degenerative disease and some 20 or 30% have multiple chronic degenerative diseases. If you have any long-term health challenge that is not getting better, that is by definition a progressive chronic disease, you want to think about the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat, low-calorie diet. All, both of those terms are important, high-fat, low-calorie. Sometimes we know people try the ketogenic diet, they forget the low-calorie part, and they just go high-fat. No, you got to go high-fat, low-calorie, and low-carbohydrate. High-fat, low carb low calorie. And they say moderate protein. I don't really know what that means, but the point is you've got to be careful with your protein. When you're eating protein, remember, protein can get turned into sugar and then into, and then into fat. Protein is anti-ketogenic if you're not using the protein. If you're using the protein, that's different. If you're a weightlifter, a bodybuilder, if you're an athlete, if you're recovering from surgery, if your protein needs are higher, if you're a teenager, if your protein needs are higher, your protein requirements are higher, and you're using that protein, then yeah, you want to be supplementing with protein. You want to make sure you're getting enough protein. But most of us eat too much protein. This is the problem with Dr. Atkins' diet. This is why Dr. Atkins was such a large fellow. He understood, and I met Dr. Atkins before he died. I had a really long, nice conversation with him one time, anyway. And he was a very big fella. He was, he was a good 250, 260 pounds, and it wasn't all muscle either. Because he understood that there's, by eating more protein, you're going to eat less carbohydrates, but he didn't understand that protein can get turned into sugar and into fat, ultimately. So this is the problem with paleo and the problem with Atkins for some people. This is why some people won't lose weight on paleo, or some people won't lose weight on Atkins, because they're not using the protein that they're eating. So you've got to make sure that you're using the protein that you're eating, or you're at least being careful with your protein intake, if you're going to go ketogenic, if you want to lose weight. Anyway, the ketogenic diet's ideal for uh, any folks who have any kind of inflammatory health issue. Also from the journal Nature Communications, this is from... Uh, September 14th, 2017, researchers uncover mechanism behind calorie restriction and lengthened lifespan. Well, guess what? The same idea. When we restrict our calories, we restrict our heat. We lower our heat. The body, under conditions of low heat, it's like a, like a computer. You don't want your computer getting too hot. It shortens its lifespan. The body, uh, the body's lifespan is shortened as well when we get too hot. So slowing things down, cooling things down is always a health strategy, and the ketogenic diet and calorie restriction allow you to do that. All right, one more, and then we'll get to your calls, 844-236-6010. Yoga and aerobic exercise together may improve heart disease risk factors. That's according to research presented at the 8th Emirates Cardiac Society Congress in collaboration with the American College of Cardiology. Man, yoga and aerobic exercise are two incredibly valuable health strategies. Doesn't have to be complicated. Yoga is as simple as some good stretching. Aerobic exercise can be as simple as walking up and down the stairs. Combined, uh, combined Indian yoga and aerobic exercise reduce mental, physical, and vascular stress and can lead to decreased cardiovascular mortality and morbidity, said Sonal Towar, a scholar in preventive cardiology 
at HGSMS Hospital in Jaipur, India. Quote, heart disease patients could benefit from learning Indian yoga and making it a routine part of daily life. Unquote, that's provided by the American College of Cardiology. All right, 844-236-6010, let's go to uh, Elaine. Our friend Elaine in Alaska. Greetings, Elaine, how you doing? Very good, Ben. Thanks so much for taking my call. And well, What's uh, going on? Nice to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. I've just got a quick question. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was having a really severe toothache, you know, to a very specific tooth, um, and I was able to kind of do some, oh, some muscle releases in the face that can nice. go refer to that tooth, and it got much better, but I said, I better go to the dentist and see, so he... He didn't like the healthy tooth being so wiggly, so he did an X-ray, and um, and sure enough, it's like like almost like a like a wedge of the tooth under the gum, kind of starting to come out. And I said, "Is this basically osteoporosis of you know the nice. mouth?" He yeah. said, "Yeah." That's what it is. So immediately, I went off coffee because I've heard caffeine is just not you know it's osteoclastic in nature. Uh, what other uh, strategies can I do for osteo? Well, Roasted. Lots. That's a great, great question. Basically, what's happening is the body's degrading. The body's breaking down. You know, there's, we have all these different diseases, and we name all these different diseases, but really what basically happens is the body just deteriorates. It breaks down. So you've got to go anabolic. You've got to go building. There's two, the, bi the biochemistry has two modes of functioning, anabolic and catabolic. Anabolic means building, like anabolic steroids. You may have heard that term, anabolic steroids. Catabolic means breaking down. So the body is, is, in this, is always in combination of building up and breaking down, but when we're younger and healthier and stronger, we got more buildup going. When we're older, we got more breakdown going. It's like a business. In a business, you're either in the red or in the black, right? When you're, when you're breaking down, it's like your body is in the, in the red. When you're building up, it's like your body's in the black. We got to get your body back in the black. You're not just breaking down in the jaw area. You're breaking down everywhere. It's not like breakdown occurs in one targeted area. The body's a system. So we've got deterioration of the, of the uh, uh, bone in the jaw. You probably have it in other places as well. So what you want to do is you want to reverse that process, and there's lots of ways to do it. So you want to go turn, turn the uh, equation around. So from net catabolic, from net breakdown, you want to be into net anabolic or net build up. And that's basically what that's basically what anti-aging and health are all about, going from net breakdown to net build up, net catabolic to net anabolic. In the red, a body in the red, back to a body in the black. Hang on, Elaine. We'll tell you about, I'll give you some ideas here when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back. Actual tech. Okay, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844 236 6010 is our number. We're talking to Elaine in Alaska. You there, Elaine? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, so we want to get, did that make sense, that whole net anabolic, net catabolic, breakdown, oh, yeah. build up? Okay, so we want to get you back into build up. When we talk about building up the body, what we're really talking about is building up the connective tissue. The connective tissue is the largest component of the body, and I know you know about the connective tissue, Elaine. It's about uh, some 30% of the body's connective tissue. When the body breaks down, it's largely the connective tissue that's breaking down. So when we talk about going anabolic or going buildup from, from breakdown, from, from catabolic, we're talking about building connective tissue. Osteoporosis is arthritis of the bone, or is arthritis of the bone. It's the same basic idea. Instead of, instead of deteriorating joints, which you have in arthritis, you have deteriorating bone. It's deteriorating connective tissue either way. So everything you do for arthritis is the same thing you're going to be doing for osteoporosis. Anything you do for arthritis or osteoporosis is everything you've got to do to build the body back up again if you find that you're deteriorating or breaking down. So it's a connective tissue building process that you want to undergo. And how do you do it? Well, first of all, you can't build connective tissue without vitamin C. So make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine as much as you can. You might want to throw in a little extra vitamin C. Protein is very important uh, for building connective tissue, particularly the kind of protein that you get in cartilage. That's why bone broth protein is such a neat, it w was such a neat invention. Now you see it all over the place, but you know, Jordan was the first guy, Jordan Rubin was the first guy to come up with a, a bone broth protein. Uh, I use bone broth protein every day, and I would suggest you do as well. And they have or or organic bone broth protein now too, by the way. 
Mm. Um, so bone broth protein, also bone broth itself. Uh, and then the components in the cartilage that aren't necessarily protein, but things like high aluronic acid and glucosamine and chondroitin, all of those will help. So you'll get those in bone broth protein, you'll get those in bone broth, and you can also supplement with things like the glucogel caps. Also, I would be using a little extra high aluronic acid, which is always a good supplement. High aluronic acid is one of my favorite supplements, but it's not, it, it doesn't have the same benefits when you use it topically that it does internally for folks who are trying to stimulate connective tissue or stimulate collagen production by using high hyaluronic acid. Topically, that's not going to happen. But if you take high hyaluronic acid capsules, that very well might happen. Maybe 200 milligrams a day of high hyaluronic acid. Don't forget your minerals. Minerals are also important for the strength and integrity of the bone. Calcium and magnesium in particular, but also zinc is important. Silica, one of the most underappreciated of all the minerals. You might uh, use something called Abkit, A-B-K-I-T, Abkit silica gel. That might help you. Uh, and then also so uh, in addition to magnesium and calcium and strontium, zinc is also important and copper is also important. Both zinc and copper, maybe 50 milligrams of zinc, picolinate a day, and two to four milligrams of copper a day. Zinc and copper go together, like magnesium and calcium go together, like potassium and sodium go together. So you always want to, uh, whenever you're taking zinc, you always want to combine that with copper. Like when you're, uh, when you're using sodium or getting a lot of sodium in your diet, you want to make sure that you're getting potassium as well as when you're supplementing supplementing or getting a lot of calcium, you want to make sure that you're supplementing or getting enough magnesium to balance it out. All right, don't forget exercise. That's also important. And also, if you find that you're running acidic, that can deteriorate connective tissue, high levels of acid, which are associated with stress. So make sure you're relaxing the body and practicing your slow, deep breathing techniques. A little bit of exercise wouldn't hurt either. Exercise also helps stimulate connective tissue. All right, Elaine, anything else? Did I help you out? Uh, one more thing I should tell you. Gelatin can also help you if you do Knox gelatin or even uh, now you can get collagen powder. Uh, either way, Knox gelatin is cheap. Look for organic gelatin, though. I don't think Knox comes organic, but there are organic gelatins that you can get. That's also very helpful for building connective tissue. All right, I'm going to let you go here, my dear. Just a real quick question. Osteo FX by yes. Young. Is that something yes. that's Heck good? yes. Osteo FX, the whole healthy start pack, Osteo FX. Oh, yeah, the ultimate EFAs, too. Essential fatty acids are also very important for connective tissue. Absolutely, the Osteo FX is important. You know, I, I, didn't, I don't want to overwhelm you here, but now that you're, you know, adding stuff in, MSM sulfur is also good, too. Uh, sulfur is, plays a really important role in making connective tissue hard, hardening connective tissue. And sulfur deficiency is shockingly common. So uh, adding MSM sulfur and, yes, indeed, your uh, Osteo FX and your Ultimate EFA and, of course, your BTT, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, that goes without saying, uh, and the glucogel caps, too. Don't forget those. Okay. All right, I'm going to motivate here and get one more call. Thank you so much, right. Elaine. Hope we helped you out. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to Carl, the Truth Raider. You got some, you got a couple minutes here, Carl, so I don't have to cut you off, buddy. No, no, no worries, Ben. I got attacked last night. Uh, what happened? She had another seizure. Your cat? And yes, and she fell backward. And I tried to get away from her, but she grabbed onto my left bicep and just carved into my arm. Oh no! I'm so sorry, man. So, get some, uh, get some topical zinc oxide, topical okay. vitamin C. Topical fat soluble C. Get my omega six healing cream. That's great for healing burns and scratches and cuts and scrapes and yeah. abrasions. The the omega six healing cream. Also, uh, zinc oxide is cheap. You can get it at the health food store okay. or the and, or the drugstore and get that pretty quickly. Uh, is it in fact? It's not yeah, red and infected. That's infected. what I wanted. Uh, uh, very 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 quick. It has like a pink uh, inflammation patch next to it. So. I went to the dentist this morning. They were concerned about that. They wouldn't give me dental treatment. They said they wanted me to get that checked oh. out. Oh, wow. Did they, is it the kind of thing they thought you might need an antibiotic for? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I well, wanted to find out be. what I could take internally. What can I take internally instead of antibiotics? I wouldn't mess around with it. I'd be using an antibiotic. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not crazy about using drugs, but antibiotics definitely have their place. Uh, right. you, don't want, you don't want an infection, that's for sure. It, and you right. may already have one. It sounds like the dentist thinks that anyway. I wouldn't be playing around with it. I would be using an antibiotic, but make sure you're getting some probiotics with it. Not, right. not, don't take probiotics with your antibiotic. That's very important because okay. the antibiotics will kill the probiotic. But between, right. uh, and then as soon as you're done with, your, with the course of antibiotics, make sure you're using probiotics. And when you're done with your antibiotics, it's probably a good idea to use something like bentonite clay or zeolite, something that can kind of okay. pull that antibiotic out. 
I'd also be using high doses of vitamin C, which have antibiotic properties, antibi okay. which has an antibiotic property. Zinc is anti-infective and also very important for healing the skin, 50 milligrams right. of zinc a day. And then everything we just talked about with the connective tissue building, that can also help you uh, uh, restore, this, restore the health of the skin and also the connective tissue under the skin. So uh, in addition to supplementing with zinc, I would be using uh, a supplementing with things like uh, glucosamine and high hyaluronic acid and uh, a silica, liquid silica gel, like I was, everything I was just talking about with Elaine would also help right. you. Did it go down into the, did it go deep where you can kind of see yeah. a lot of, it went deep? Well, yeah, it's a good contusion. The, she gouged right in with a nail right deep into so a deep gouge. Yeah, that's, my, my I, I'm sorry about that. I would be using the antibiotic, do everything yeah. I just talked about with Elaine, and then throw in some, some of the ultimate enzymes, but take the ultimate enzymes on an empty stomach so you can get the anti-inflammatory effects of the ultimate enzymes. You might also want to try some herbal stuff, too. Turmeric right. has anti-inflammatory properties. You know, we love turmeric. Aloe vera also. You might want to drink a little aloe vera. And then aloe vera topically can speed healing too. You know what else is really neat for speeding healing of the skin is uh, vitamin E. Not applied topically necessarily, but taken internally. Taken, okay. Taking a really high dose, maybe like 800 or so uh, international units. Usually I recommend 400 international units. So doubling, uh, doubling that, going to 800 or even 1200 international units for two or right. three days can really okay. speed healing as well. Uh, vitamin K is anti-bruising. So maybe, I don't know, Five five thousand yeah. micrograms a day will help with that. Vitamin K vitamin K is a really underappreciated vitamin. Very important for calcium metabolism, but also important for helping uh, improve blood flow. So bruising okay. uh, folks who have bruising issues, either chronic bruising issues or if you yeah, just bruise yourself bruised. from an injury, vitamin K yeah. might be helpful there. Yeah, garlic yeah. salt. Garlic salt. I, I was wanting to that, mention yeah. that to, you know to contribute to the conversation. Garlic salt. Gar <laughs> I think yeah, I put yeah. a lot of that in all my food, so I wanted to say. Uh, you know what? The, what, the, what are the benefits of uh, using garlic salt? Garlic is amazing stuff for the blood. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know about garlic salt. I don't even really know what garlic salt is, to tell you the truth. It's, I, I think it's salt with it. garlic flavor or something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, yeah no, it, I don't it, think that's the same as garlic. garlic. Yeah, you know, you want re you want real garlic, and whenever you're using garlic medicinally, you want to crush it up first and let it um, let it uh, react with the air. There's a reaction that occurs between the air and the medicinal compounds in the garlic that activate it. So you always want to crush up your garlic first, and then kind of let it sit out, and then use the garlic medicinally. And I, it's, it makes much more sense to me to use fresh garlic medicinally, uh, crushed up fresh garlic, than it does to try to do garlic pills. It's cheaper, it's tastier, uh, and you probably get more medicinal value out of it. All right, I gotta go. That's the that's the music, Carl, my friend. Have a beautiful day. Good luck with everything. You. And get your cat some taurine if he's not already on taurine. Anti-seizure yeah. for cats. She is, yes. Yeah. Anti-seizure for everybody. All right, take care, take care uh, Carl, the Truth Raider. Okay, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products and also to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. And then our website, truthtreatments.com for all the truth treatment products, truthtreatments.com. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.